This is Twit. This is AMD's. I, 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 I was trying to write this in the review or not. It's their final release of the Ryzen mainstream platform, right? Yeah. So they, when they announced Ryzen, they talked about Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5, and Ryzen 3. Mm -hmm. And that it was going to compete in, uh, you know, against the Core i7, the Core i5, and the Core i3. This is the final of those three steps. Yep, the, the fewest number of cores. The, the same number of cores Oh, as the Ryzen 5 parts, well, some of the Ryzen 5 parts. Ryzen 5 had a six core and two quad cores, so but they had SMT enabled. Oh. These processors are quad core, no SMT, so just quad core four thread. Okay. Uh, they are the Ryzen 3 1300X and the Ryzen 3 1200. Um, they have uh, clock speeds a little bit lower than what we've seen in the other processors as well. Uh, looks like the uh, 1300X goes up to 3.7 gigahertz uh, with a base of 3.4. While the Ryzen 3 1200 has a base of 3.1 and goes up to 3.4. So there's a 300 megahertz gap between these two parts. Okay. Um, they both have 8 megs of cache. They both have DDR4 2400 memory support. They're both labeled as 65 watt TDP. But they are significantly lower cost than the other Ryzen parts we've seen. The 1300X is $129 and the Ryzen 3 1200 is 109 And as you look at that kind of lineup that's on the screen now uh, that kind of compares the... Uh, Core i3, Core i5, and even Ryzen 5 lineup, you see that it's kind of an interesting mix. We, we see this a lot in the really low-priced uh, GPU market as well, where it gets very complex because $10 either way is going to change which processor you're going to select. Yeah. So the 1300X at $129 is slightly more expensive than the Core i3-7100, but slightly less expensive than the Core i3-7350K. Right, and then the Ryzen 3 1200 is, you know, a, is between the Core i3 7100 and the Pentium G4560, still Cabby Lake, um, although the the Cabby Lake Pentium is actually actually has an MSRP of sixty five dollars, but you haven't been able to find it for that for a while. It's hard to get a hold of. Um, what's interesting to note about these comparisons is that the Core i3 parts and the Pentium are dual core hyper threaded. Yep. Right, so they're two core four threads. Going up against quad core, like true core, all four threads designs. Yeah, yep. uh, thread you, per core. If you look at the core uh, or the Ryzen five, you know you have six core, and four core to eight thread, and then so we assume Ryzen five is going to be faster in all the multi-threaded applications. The interesting comparison I was looking into is like those Core i fives in the end are quad core four thread as well. So they kind of have the same core count and division yeah. as the Ryzen threes. Uh, but they, you know, are priced significantly higher. You know, two hundred bucks, two hundred forty bucks. So it's it's a it's a very different. You know, you're talking about one hundred percent, eighty percent difference in price. So yeah. worth noting that as as people kind of look through the benchmarks, the platforms are the same here. You're looking at the same uh, AM4 socket support for the same chipsets. Uh, you know, technically it can support the X370, but you probably shouldn't be using it because that's an expensive motherboard for a very cheap processor. B350, A320 is where you want to go. Um, and the only difference is the A320 does not support CPU overclocking, whereas the B350 does. Uh, both of those still support memory overclocking, which is more important for the Ryzen platform than for the Intel platform. If you go back up, that cooler is also worth pointing out. Um, we have one of them here. This is the Wraith Spire, I want to say. Yeah, can confirm for me. This doesn't have LED lights. It doesn't have any of the fancy stuff, but it's a it's a nice cooler that does a fantastic job of running quietly while keeping the CPU cool. Well, and it's, like it's all aluminum. Yeah. Like with no copper yeah, core in the middle. Correct. Hmm. Um, and it, but it's included with the processor. So it's in box with the retail okay. packaging. So for 129 bucks or even 109 bucks, you get the processor and you get a cooler. It's just one of the things you don't have to worry about. Yeah, it saves you a few bucks. Yeah. 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 And it's just less hassle, right? Um, we mentioned the platforms, the core-to-core -core latency, kind of, that's more of a, of a super technical thing, but it, it, it remains the same. It's interesting because in our previous looks at that, the we've always had SMT to contend with. Mm -hmm. So two threads running on the same core were equal uh, latency, yep. right? Like those two threads communicated pretty much instantaneously. When you don't have SMT, first of all, there's a way less data points <laughs> on the graph yeah. uh, because there's only four logical cores to really look at. Um, but the, the performance results kind of look the same. As we cross between the CCXs on the same die, that latency goes up to somewhere around 130, 135 nanoseconds. Whereas uh, if you're on the same core, 
uh, or, or I'm sorry, if you're on the same CCX, the core to core communication is around 40, 43. Yeah, so it's like a seconds. three times jump. Yeah. Yeah. But that's very similar to what we saw in Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 because all of all of these parts are single die. It's just how many cores per CCX are they enabling or disabling, yep. essentially. Um, Performance-wise, this, this was an interesting comparison. It should surprise nobody that the single-threaded performance leader is the Intel product line. Uh, the Core i3 and the Pentium... Um, both actually run at higher clock speeds than the Ryzen 3, mm -hmm. while also having better IPC. Yep. So if you look at tests like the Cinebench single-threaded, or you look at you know here the Audacity MP3 encode, where lower is better, make sure you keep that in mind as you look at these metrics. Um, and this is a very single-threaded application. Uh, the, the Ryzen 3 struggles to keep up with anything, and so does the Ryzen 5. The Ryzen 5 is actually slower than the Core i3 and Core i5 parts in those tests as well. And you see that kind of duplicated across um, anything that is, that is heavily single-threaded. But when you get into multi-threaded workloads, you start to see the benefit that Ryzen 3 has over Core i3. So if you look at, uh, yeah, there's Cinebench single-thread. If you scroll down to Cinebench multi-thread right there, you get a little bit of an idea uh, of what the differences are. So even though the Core i3 addresses four threads, SMT slash hyper-threading is less effective. You're sharing resources across two threads, whereas in the Ryzen 3 true quad-core, you're not. Mm -hmm. Those resources are all independent, so you're going to get a pretty significant performance boost. Now, as you scroll down there and you look at something like the Ryzen 5 1600X, it stands out a lot because it is a six-core 12 thread, significantly faster across that. Pavre, another good example of that. Um, you see, what you also see is if you if you look some, and you know, we have to look through all these, but if you look at like Sysmark and that type of stuff, it's very responsiveness based. So the ability for the Core i3 processors to take advantage of speed shift and boost up very quickly. Um, gives it an advantage in that regard. Gaming performance is is interesting to see as um, the gaming performance at 1080p has been the sore spot for Ryzen since the Ryzen 7 release. It pro, it uh, progressed through Ryzen 5. It kind of remained the same. Yep. The interesting thing with with the Ryzen 3 versus Core i3 is that we're getting down to the number of cores and threads where like a dual core part is going to struggle with some gaming. Yeah, yeah right? because you have like four solid threads worth of things going yeah. on and you're oh, trying to, having trying to four, squeeze all that into two cores. Yeah, having yeah. four threads in a game engine is very common now. Yep. Whereas, you know, having eight or 16 is uncommon. So, mm -hmm. but when you start to see that, what, you, what you'll notice is that the, you know, if you look at Ryzen 5 versus Core i5, the Core i5 probably had an advantage in most of the time. But in Core i3 versus Ryzen 3, it's much closer together. In general, I'd say the Core i3 and the Pentium are doing a little bit better on average. Um, but it's 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 much closer than anything we, we had seen before, right? If you look at something like uh, Far Cry Primal, um, the Ryzen 3 uh, parts are... You know, basically in line with the Core i3-7100 and the Pentium G4560. But if you look at the Ryzen 5 compared to the Core i5, it's actually a little bit slower, right? So yeah. it's 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 a it's a difference of we're getting down into the segment of parts where core and thread count actually have a direct impact on games, regardless of the IPC and clock speed. Um, so it's, so it's worth taking note at. And, and what I think this means is for people who are interested in buying this processor for like a budget gaming build. There are way fewer caveats of yeah, but that than existed with Ryzen five or Ryzen seven, mm -hmm. right? So um, if you if you know you're spending one hundred twenty dollars on a CPU at the most, then the Ryzen three twelve hundred is going to do just as good at gaming, more or less, than the Core i three seventy one hundred or the Pentium G forty five sixty, and that's actually impressive because the G forty five sixty runs at four point two gigahertz all the time. Like there's no turbo boost. It, it, it'll clock down to save power, but it's not right. like there's not there's no turbo states in it. Um, and normally that G4560 is kind of has been that uh, target budget gaming processor and, you know, used for a lot of other purposes. Power consumption is the last thing I'll mention. Ryzen 3 uses more power than Core i3, especially the 1300X. This is some of the stuff that confuses me about some of these launches that AMD's had is the 1300X and 1200 are both rated at 65 watts. This is total system power draw, so don't don't look at these numbers so much as the difference between them. Right. Um, there's a twenty. There's a full twenty watt difference, twenty watt plus difference between power consumed by the Ryzen thirteen hundred X 
and by the Ryzen 3 1200. Huh. Um, you're running at 300 megahertz higher clocks is the difference here. Sure. So the, it, it's weird that they both have the same rating then. Yeah, yeah. I, I would agree. Like it, I, I don't know. We, we've I've had a partial discussion with AMD about that, like where their TDP versus reality. You know, well, <laughs> their, their argument is that TDP doesn't measure power draw; it measures measures thermal dissipation. So as long as things clock down at a certain time, that you know they can still have a 65 watt cooler and it would still be effective. And I guess it is. It, it, and but. What they're essentially kind of getting into is SDP, which is what Intel created. That right. was like scenario design power. TDP is just has has had a very specific definition for a long time, and I I wish they would adhere to it. Um, you know, performance per dollar graphs are in there. I think you can pretty much surmise what that comes from uh, and what that equates to after looking at the results. You know, uh, in the single threaded tests, it's not going to be great. Audacity, Cinebench, single thread, that's not great. But as you get into the multi threaded and into the gaming, the performance per dollar is really really good. Um, you know, it's better than the Core i3. The uh, it's better than the Core i5 in a lot of cases, uh, all, in actually every case, and better than the Ryzen 5 in some cases too. The Pentium G4560 is an interesting data point in there because it's so cheap. It's 80 bucks, um, and if it, if if we could actually had found it for the 65 dollar MSRP that it had, it would be even more impressive in that performance per dollar. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I don't know if it went on sale yet today. The Ryzen 3 did it. Okay, so it's actually available for sale. Uh, and the B350 and A320 motherboards have been out for a while, so you can pick those up. So if you are looking for a budget build and all these performance numbers and stuff really make sense to you, uh, give it a look. It's good. I, I, you know, we had there, we'll talk about it in a little bit, the AMD earnings. This is, you know, the Ryzen 3 is probably probably the biggest part of the market, more on the OEM side than on the retail side. So we'll have to see what impact this actually has if Dells and HPs and those guys that are selling business machines into work environments start to integrate um, Ryzen 3 at the same level they do Core i3 or if that will need to be the, uh, the Ryzen Pro that does that.